Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless one of the things that has to come out is an increase of ambition that we have to get more people behaving with greater urgency ready to raise their goals and try to move faster to do what we need to do there's no running away there's no escaping responsibility all right it's almost time for the annual socialist gathering it's the un's yearly climate conference so you have world leaders, diplomats, journos, activists across the globe are fueling up their private jets or hopping a private jet and charting a course for Dubai, where on Wednesday they're going to lay out their plans for how they can better control your life. First up, what you eat. According to Bloomberg, the world's most developed nations will be told to curb their excessive appetite for meat as part of the first comprehensive plan to bring the global agri-food industry into line with the Paris Climate Agreement. Joining me now, Steve Malloy from the Energy and Environment Legal Institute. He's also a former Trump member of the EPA transition team. Steve, what's really going on here? Let's just focus on meat, and then we're going to get to fossil fuels. They're obsessed with meat production. What's that really about? Well, they imagine that meat production is responsible for 20% of the global warming that's happening. And of course, that's not true, but they don't really care. Um, you know, they've been after every aspect of our lives, everything, we, you know, our, where we work, uh, what we eat, what we drive, what kind of electricity we use, all these things, every aspect of our lives, all the way down to what kind of toilet paper we use. Uh, they want to tell us what to do. But they are never going to give up meat. Just like during COVID, they never get, gave up their fancy dinners at the French Laundry. They didn't stop traveling to the Bahamas, wherever their vacation homes are. So they're never going to give up meat. They Look, want regular people to have less and be happy with less and have fewer choices. Of course, the elites like John Kerry are never going to give up their jet travel, their their meat. Al Gore said he wasn't going to give up cheeseburgers, but they expect us to. They expect us to give up everything for the climate. They don't really care. They get a pass. Do cows and goats and, and sheep, do they, what is it, that flatulence? Is that what causes Yeah, the it? methane. But of course, methane is irrelevant to climate, but they don't care. Cows and other grass-eating species uh, have a digestion system that emits methane. And methane is a very powerful greenhouse gas. And so cows alone uh, account for about 6% of global emissions. So we need to change cows, uh, cows just cows alone. Uh, How are we going to do that? Well, uh, actually, of all the categories, uh, the one that has gone better than I would have expected five years ago is this work to make what's called artificial meat. So you have people like Impossible or Beyond Meat, both of which uh, I invested in. You eat it as well, or do you like it? Absolutely. You can go to uh, Burger King and buy the Impossible Burger. All right, and is it healthier for you or just healthier for the atmosphere? It's, it's slightly healthier for you in terms of less cholesterol. It's, of course, dramatic reduction in uh, methane emissions you know, animal cruelty, manure management, and the pressure that meat consumption puts on land use. Steve, according to The Guardian today, Secretary General of the UN, and a good friend of yours, Antonio Guterres, <laughs> has called fossil fuel production the poisonous root of the climate crisis and that it should be dismantled. And you heard John Kerry, we have to get the urgency to dismantle it. And they're mad that the United States this year has actually had more fossil fuel oil and gas production than I think we've ever had, which uh, is this past year. Sure, we have record fossil fuel production now, as does Even China. Even Biden. That's just the whole world. Look, this is this scam is 35 years old. We are burning more fossil fuel than ever before. Emissions are up 50 percent since 1988 when the climate hoax began. Um, it's just not, you know, this is not about emissions. It's about control. Over that 35-year period, you know, emissions have gone way up. So has their control. Now, they don't care about emissions. Ultimately, they just want to control how we live. And that goes with the EVs, right? So oh, New absolutely. Jersey another... bans the sale of, uh, of gas-powered cars in 2035. California is doing it. Even Virginia has Look, provisions. That's going to 
steamroll. They hate cars because cars give us freedom. The New World Order masters are replacing our God-given food with lab-grown monstrosities. So what's on the menu in the kingdom of Antichrist? Lab-grown chicken, steak, cricket flour, and all sorts of creepy crawling things. These meat in a test tube companies like Upside Foods are backed and funded by none other than Bill Gates. 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Bill Gates, under the influence of deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, is trying to destroy food which God declared good under the pretense of climate change. The government overlords are coming for your freedoms. Can you guess what their main target is? Ned Ryan reacts. I've just gone through a change from 30 to 40 miles an hour on the speed limit, and that's shown on the dashboard. Happened almost immediately. So actually, if I push on the accelerator pedal, it won't go any faster than uh, 40 miles an hour. My speed limit is limited to 40. Now, what you just saw is already a reality in some European cars and will be in all new European cars starting in 2024. It can only go so fast. And you know that since the Democrats love the EU, they love Europe, they always want to be in Europe, they want to do the same thing here in the United States. And forget your constitutional rights. Those can be damned, even your movement controlled. The National Transportation Safety Board is recommending that all new vehicles get technology that makes speeding, quote, more difficult or completely impossible following in Europe's footsteps. Joining me now, Ned Ryan, American Majority CEO. Ned, this is why they love the lockdowns. They like to keep us all moving as little as possible permanently. Yeah. Uh, what, what's Correct. Mayor Pete going to do here, Ned? Mayor Pete, little Pete, and uh, the rest of the nanny staters want to dictate. It's almost 280 million Americans that have a driver's license. Uh, how fast they're going to be able to drive. And their, their argument, Laura, is that they're going to prevent 12,000 speeding deaths which if you do the math is 0.000043% of all drivers. And this is, if they were really concerned about saving lives, I'm sorry, most of those people advocating for this, they don't care about butchering babies. So this is about control. And they're rapacious in their pursuit of control. And the question then becomes, Laura, let's say they want to curb your speed now. What if in the future becomes, well, we want to kill switch in your car. We don't like the fact that well, you're driving too far on fossil fuels. Well, they're working yeah. on that too. Let's say you're driving too far fossil fuels. It's not good for the, the environment. So the, the bureaucrats inside the administrative state have decided by fiat what's best for you. And after a certain amount of miles, there's a kill switch. The fact of the matter is they're never going to stop. And, and we need to understand that, that freedom doesn't end overnight. It usually dies a slow death of a thousand cuts. As we slowly concede these supposed small things, to those who have this voracious appetite for control. And so I guess the, the question I would have for those watching is, at what point do we say enough as the American people, we're not going to have unelected bureaucrats telling us, no gas stoves, you have to curb speed on your cars, thermostats, you name it, you can't have well, a certain amount, you can't have so much meat. I think you hit the nail on the head, just like we just discussed the erosion or the, the would-be erosion of our Second Amendment rights, because there's a gun emergency. Right. Everything is an emergency except their lousy leadership, right? So that's what they want to do. They want to control what, how you can defend yourself. They want to control how far you go, how fast you go, well, how you can eat, what you can eat, how you can cook your food. It's not about the green agenda. It's about control. The New World Order is a group of elitist people bent on ruling the world through a single worldwide system of government. The appeal of this New World Order lies in its proposal to free the world of wars, and political strife, and its promise to eradicate poverty, disease, and hunger. Its purpose is to meet the needs and hopes of all mankind through worldwide peace. This new world order will supposedly do away with the need for diverse world governments. This will be accomplished by the installation of a one world political system. The new world order 
will emphasize tolerance through the promotion and acceptance of other cultures and their values and ideologies. Its ultimate goal is a sense of unity and oneness with all people. Other objectives include the use of a single worldwide currency, as well as oneness in politics, religion, and moral values. The New World Order will promise worldwide peace, the absence of war, and the elimination of all political unrest. The problem with the acceptance and approval of any New World Order is that no government has ever offered, nor will it ever offer, real hope and peace for mankind. Those who desire the ushering in of a New World Order are in for a rude awakening. Only heaven brings lasting peace and happiness. The Bible makes it very clear that all things associated with his life on earth, with his sufferings, his decay, his discontent, and death, will continue with this physical life as we read in 2 Corinthians 4.16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Although our physical bodies are growing older, and we notice that our outer man is progressively decaying and wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day after day. The new life we received at salvation is being transformed into the image and likeness of Christ as we mature in the faith, grow in grace, and gain a more intimate knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The one hope for all believers lies only in heaven, as we read in John 14, 1-4. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. It is the hope of heaven we need, not the false hope of a new world order, as the world is not our home, as we read in Philippians 3.20. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. When the deception comes, if you're not a born-again believer, you'll be swept away with it. The deception will be greater than you ever imagined in your life. It is going to be profound as to what happens. People in the high places are Satanist, they're Illuminati. Spiritual power in high places that will bring about a one world government. And by doing that, they intend to rule the world. And they have the help of a whole uh, mass of demonic spirits who are able to perform all kinds of miracles, deceptive miracles, manifestations, and all of this stuff to help them to bring about that one world government. And the goal is so that they can put one man up and worship him as God, the Antichrist. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, 
Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.